Hi there, today I'm doing a review of the DE5000 LCR meter from a company called DERDE. I bought this meter from eBay because it's very well specced and because it can test uh, capacitors and inductors and so forth uh, at frequencies from 100 Hz up to uh, 100 kHz, which is uh, very nice if you're doing RF or anything. It would obviously be nice if it could go beyond 100 kHz, but for this kind of price that is uh, really hard to find. So let's uh, take a look at it and uh, see what it can do. Mechanically it's uh, very, very sturdy. I don't think I can break it. But unfortunately it's also very bulky. Uh, if you compare it to, let's say, a Fluke 70, you can see how much bigger it is, and it's really it's really thick as well, which is probably the the biggest problem, because it really doesn't fit very well in your hand, and also the surface is really really smooth, so I, I don't doubt that you can drop it quite easily by mistake. At the back, there's a there's a leg here or whatever you call it that it can stand on, and uh, it, it it's 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 fairly stable. And uh, when you push buttons, it works pretty well if you're on a rubber surface like this. But if you're if you're placing the meter on, on something else, uh, like a normal tabletop or something, it will it will slide backwards. The battery compartment is uh, opened with four screws, and um, the screws are what looks like a three millimeter machine screws, and uh, there are metal inserts in the plastic here so that you can uh, use it for a long time without ruining in the thread. The battery, as you can see, is a standard 9 volt battery. And uh, because of a little plastic tab down here, you cannot insert it the wrong way around. So that's a nice little feature. So let's just quickly put it back together and, and uh, try it out. In fact, it's quite difficult to use and I had to read the manual first before I was able to do uh, measurements. The power button is quite obvious what it does and uh, it starts up in a mode called LCR Auto mode. So basically, whatever you plug in, it will try and detect it. Sometimes it does detect things wrongly and I had a case where one of my capacitors that I used for testing was uh, detected as, a, as an inductor. But uh, obviously in most cases you will know beforehand what kind of component that you're dealing with. So this is not really a big issue. So here we have the close-up of the screen. And as you can see it's in auto LCR mode. And uh, the way it works is that it cycles. So the first time you press the LCR button it changes to measuring inductance. You can see here LP showing that it's an inductance and the unit in uh, Henry. The big display below here shows the, the actual value and the little display up here is uh, showing Q, dissipation factor, parallel resistance, uh, uh, series resistance and things like this. Basically the top one is for the parasitics. So anyway, let's just continue. When you press it once, it goes to measure inductance. The next time you press it, it shows uh, capacitance. And next time again, it shows resistance. and. Uh, back it shows the DCR and uh, then back again to auto. So you have to understand that the buttons work in that mode and uh, actually I would have preferred one button for L, one button for R, one button for C. But anyway this is how it works. Um, the other thing you can cycle is the testing frequency. When you power it up it defaults to 1 kHz. Next when you press it it becomes uh, 10 kHz then 100 kHz and then it goes to 100 Hz, which is uh, double the line frequency in Europe, uh, which is uh, very nice if you want to test decoupling capacitors and the big electrolytics on the output of a dual bridge rectifier. And 120 Hz for the US, which is double the line frequency there. And again, it's good for measuring electrolytic capacitors that are used uh, in the power supplies and stuff like that. And then back to 1 kHz, which is the standard frequency for components for audio circuits. Then they have a uh, wasted one button on backlight. I don't know if you can see it. There's a blue backlight here. Uh, it's not very bright, but uh, I think it's uh, good enough. 
Then we have, uh, I'll just uh, skip sorting uh, right now, but basically this meter can sort components based on um, how many percent they deviate from the standard value that you're trying to measure. Secondly, there's a button for computer interface. I didn't buy the computer interface, but basically it's a little box that you put on the back of the meter with an infrared interface on it for galvanic isolation. The box unfortunately makes the meter even more bulky. But since I don't have one, I can't try it out. Then there's a button for calibration, and uh, you have to do that every time you change your uh, attachment. Calibration takes one minute total, and we will try it in a little bit. Um, then it has a separate button for measuring the parasitics. You can measure uh, deviation, Q, equivalent uh, series resistance, and phase. So this is basically uh, different ways of displaying the same parameter. Sorry, I, I wasn't aware that you couldn't see the buttons. Uh, but we just went. I just went through the, the the setting button, the frequency button, the backlight button, sorting button, the interface for the PC button, calibration button, uh, the parasitics, uh, as I call it, a button, setup button, and then there's a serial parallel button. This basically displays either the serial uh, equivalent resistance or the parallel equivalent resistance. So this is for inductors or uh, capacitors. Then there's the enter button, there's a relative percentage button uh, in case you want to test a lot of components. And for instance, say those that are beyond 5% tolerance, they will be sorted and uh, thrown out. You can set a value, for instance, a 47k ohm. And uh, then anything that falls beyond maybe 5% of that, uh, it will flag. So you can uh, sort your components in that way. And uh, then there's a hold button you can press to hold the display. And uh, that's basically it. With my meter I bought uh, two peripherals. I bought this little one here. It's a pair of tweezers basically, so you can pick up um, surface mount components and measure those. As you can see there are three inputs here. There's a ground, a minus and a plus. And uh, actually it's possible to plug in the components directly here. And uh, you can measure them like that. Uh, and this is quite a good way, but sometimes you want to measure something uh, in circuit or you want to measure some service mount component. And uh, for that there's actually the inputs here and then there are another set of inputs below. So you will have the complete uh, four wire uh, differential input. And uh, if you see the, the plug here for the tweezers, it's actually using all six. So um, there will be double wires in here all the way out to the probe tip. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the probe is made from PCB material and there are two traces down here that will uh, join at the tip here. So let's just try the tweezers uh, first. When you change the attachment, uh, because there are some capacitance in the wire itself, you have to do a calibration. And um, you basically just press and hold the calibration button. And first you have to uh, calibrate it with the tweezers open. So it says open and you press cal and it will count down uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds is uh, actually quite a long time I think because you might change attachment quite often and um, not only that you have to test it 30 seconds open and then 30 seconds closed. So total it's one minute and um, I think they could have uh, improved on that uh, a bit. Um, I'm not sure why they need so long, but okay, it passed uh, the open cal. Then it tells you to short. SRT means short. I don't know why they have four digits here. They could have added an, an, an H to that, but okay, let's short it and continue the calibration. And it just continues down here. So you have to sit with this one uh, closed for 30 seconds, which is uh, quite a pain in the ass, but you know. If you want accurate measurements, uh, you should uh, calibrate the meter. Remember the accuracy is down in the 0.1 picofarad. So uh, any, any stray capacitance in the cable has to be calibrated out. The other input box that I bought is another 4 wire uh, attachment, but this time it has uh, crocodile clips. And the same way, it just plugs in here and you are ready to measure some uh, components.
Yeah, so unfortunately I don't have a good meter that I can use for reference. Um, I used to have a Unity meter that could measure uh, LC and R, but uh, that broke down. That's why I bought the D5000 instead. So the only thing I can really uh, compare it with is uh, for capacitance. I have this uh, cheap generic meter and for resistance I have a Fluke 70 here that I can use as a reference. So let's just uh, give it a quick try on a couple of 1% uh, components and see whether they agree. Um, the first thing I have here is a 0.47 microfarad and my junk meter shows a 486 nanofarad which is uh, 16 nanofarads out or roughly um, 4%. Now our new DE5000 is ready, calibration is done. And it shows uh, open open circuit. It shows 0, 0.00 picofarad, which is uh, amazing, down to three digits. So let's plug in our 0.47 microfarad and see what it says. Yeah, and it says uh, 471, which is 0.25% uh, out. So yeah, nice. So capacitance seems really uh, accurate. So let's try the uh, resistance. First my crappy meter and it shows uh, 9.88 which is uh, uh, 10 out of uh, 10. This is about 1% out so that is pretty good. And my LCR meter, if I set that to uh, R DC resistance and what have we got? 9.957 and uh, yeah well within spec. This is 5 out of 1000, so this is uh, nice. So resistance is also accurate. Yeah, well, that's just for good measure. Try the fluke and see what that says. I'm not sure you can read the display here. And it says 9.97, so the fluke and the D5000 basically agrees. So yeah, excellent. And for inductors, uh, this is my only L meter now. So I can't really, um, I don't really have anything to compare it with, uh, except for the value that it says on the inductor itself. So let's just try that with uh, the other tweezer attachment. And uh, tweezing here, and what have we got? 48 micro Henry. And uh, it should be 47, so it's about 2% uh, out. And uh, that could either be the accuracy of the meter or it could be the accuracy of the inductor. So anyway, if we're in within 2%, uh, that is pretty good. And uh, let's just try to measure the Q. Q is 3.83, uh, which is a rubbish Q. ESR is 10 ohm, yeah okay fair enough, and the phase is 7.3 uh, degrees. And yeah, that was a quick review of the DE5000 LCR meter. Uh, it has some very good features, particularly the, the four wire interface down here with a guard. And also because it can measure uh, parasitics like a dissipation factor, Q, uh, ESR and phase. Also the frequency range goes all the way up to 100 kilohertz. so the spec for this thing uh, I'm really happy about, particularly uh, for the price. It has a few little quirks, uh, most serious I guess is that it's so slippery. Uh, I'm really worried that if I had to use it uh, outside or in the field I, I would drop it. Of course you can wrap it in some tape or whatever but that doesn't look nice. It would have been nice with a more ruffled surface here. And uh, the other thing is that uh, if you haven't used it for a while, I'm pretty sure that you'll forget the mode of operation. The thing that it keeps rotating here between the different modes doesn't really make sense to me. Particularly since it just says auto mode and the button is blue. So when I first got it, I just thought, okay, auto, I'll just press blue and then it will do auto. But actually it was already in auto and it moved down to measuring uh, inductance or something. So this is really not uh, intuitive. Performance wise, it's really good. Uh, mechanically, it's very sturdy. The user interface is uh, difficult. 
and uh, the enclosure itself, the box, is, is too slippery. But if you intend to use it uh, in your lab, it's a cracking little meter. So that's it, yeah. Thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.